Houston, com check. Columbia, Houston, com check. On Saturday, the 1st of February 2003, at about 2 o'clock Greenwich Mean Time, the space shuttle Columbia was lost and seven NASA astronauts perished. The astronauts on board were Mission Commander Rick Husband, Pilot William McCool, Payload Commander Michael Anderson, Mission Specialist Laurel Clark, Mission Specialist Kalpana Chala, Mission Specialist David Brown, and Israeli Payload Specialist Ilan Ramon. Space Shuttle Columbia was launched on the 16th of January 2003, Columbia, carrying a space hub module for a 16-day scientific mission. Seven, we have a go for main engine start. Five, four, three, two, one. We have booster ignition and liftoff. The mission was conducted at an altitude of 274 kilometers and an inclination of 39 degrees. Houston now controlling the flight of Columbia, the international research mission. This was an autonomous space shuttle mission with no docking to the ISS and no crew exchange. Columbia now rolling on to the proper azimuth for a 39 degree inclination to orbit. Shuttle in a heads down wings level position for the eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Solid rocket booster separation confirmed. Guidance now converging. Columbia's onboard computers commanding the main engine nozzles to gently swivel, aiming the shuttle for a... In a nominal shuttle re-entry scenario, the re-entry phase starts at about one hour before touchdown and at some 8,000 kilometers from the landing site at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. At that point, the orbiter is at an altitude of about 170 kilometers and is traveling at about 28,000 kilometers an hour. The orbiter is then put into its correct orientation and reaction control system jets are fired to start the descent. The last communications with the spacecraft occurred about 8 a.m. Central Time. As it the re-entry of the Columbia on the 1st of Central February Texas. 2003 was not normal. At about 2 o'clock Greenwich Mean Time, communications with the space shuttle were lost. Columbia, at this you time, the orbiter was flying over Texas at an altitude of 63 kilometers at about 18 times the speed of sound, and it was still 1,400 kilometers from the landing site at the Kennedy Space Center. The video footage shows the spacecraft following a constant track and slowly disintegrating. Debris is currently being found over a large area of East Texas and Louisiana and is being collected. Columbia, Houston, UHF com check. Christopher Fugelzang's flight, planned for July 2003 on board Space Shuttle Atlantis, might be postponed. At present, the shuttle fleet is grounded. The biannual taxi flights to the ISS using Russian Soyuz modules are currently under review. The next Soyuz flight, planned for the 26th of April 2003, will be a taxi flight with ESA astronaut Pedro Duque on board. This flight is now also under active review, but in the meantime Pedro Duque and Andrei Kuipers, who is scheduled to fly on a Soyuz 7S in October 2003, are both maintaining their training program as planned. The Space Shuttle Columbia was carrying the SpaceHab Research Double Module with seven ESA payloads and a mass of 600 kilograms. Approximately 25% of the payload was being carried in the shuttle mid-deck and in the SpaceHab. All payloads performed well during the 16-day mission and the crew worked in teams so as to be able to conduct experiments 24 hours a day. However, as no samples or electronic data can now be provided to the investigators for analysis, no scientific results will be available from many of the experiments. This is the case with regards to the biopack, which included eight experiment containers. The scientific results consisted of the processed experiment samples. All the processed experiment samples in the bio box, which related to four experiments, were also lost. However, the facility telemetry data that are available indicated perfect performance of the bio box. European research in space and terrestrial osteoporosis 
had two experiments on board with samples consisting of human bone cells. Again, the science results were represented by the samples themselves. However, not all experiment data and results were lost. The advanced respiratory monitoring system was responsible for one ground and seven flight experiments in pulmonary and cardiovascular research in microgravity. All the information that was gathered from these experiments during the mission is available in electronic form for further analysis by the investigators. For our experiments, uh, we have all the data that was uh, downloaded during the mission after the experiments that were performed uh, during the beginning the middle and the end of the mission and uh, which will be compared with the data uh, of the experiments performed before uh, uh, the mission. Then from the scientific point of view we can uh, 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 analyze uh, the data and uh, uh, certainly to reach some scientific conclusions from these experiments. These tests have been performed before during several missions over the last 10 years. But the results have been so stunning that scientists wanted to repeat them to find out if they really were correct. It is very important to repeat them to confirm the, the results if they are correct, as we expect. They are quite uh, important and uh, it's uh, also very important to understand how the uh, different organs be behave in weightlessness in order to prepare uh, long-term missions in, in space. The lives of many lung patients can be saved as a result of the conclusions Professor Paiva can draw from these microgravity experiments. We follow patients that uh, uh, went through a lung transplantation and some of these patient, uh, patients suffer a rejection of their lung and following them with this kind of tests we can detect the rejection one year before the classical tests and this is something that was learned in part from uh, the tests that we have been performed in space for uh, several years. These seven astronauts risked their life in pursuit of knowledge. Their mission ended in tragedy. Seven lives were lost, and the work they have done will help save many others. If only to honor their memory, NASA has the moral obligation to continue its space program and to continue exploring the universe.